four months ago. This is what was planted four months ago, right here. Okay. That's pretty amazing. Did you plant it? That Cocotec? pot is in there. Yeah. Some yeah. That could prevent famine right there. I yeah. mean, just that one. Okay. That's what this was in ancient Hawaii. Was famine food. Mm -hmm. You no. left it in the ground until you needed it. No. We're going to count the oha that come off of this. Just yeah. as Jack an wants to take exercise. them off. Okay, Jack's Let's going to Jack take them it. off. So get down and then start with the bigger ones. Yeah. Like that. Start you want to take the big ones. ones off first. And we'll lay them out on the table from we're, biggest to smallest. Yeah, we're not going to leave them out here in the sun to dry long. They're, they're okay like this, but we'll get them in some water so that we can replant all of these. Okay, now here's another one. That has, that has grandchildren. This time, one, two, three, and there's a little one right there. And these are large enough to plant the these, grandchildren? These are. These are all viable. Look, they have their own roots. You see this? This is another possibility for aquaponics systems. One of the biggest problems facing a taro farmer if he wants to get a new variety into his fields is to come up with seed stock. You can't buy taro seeds. You can't go buy five pounds of taro seeds and plant 2,000 taro plants overnight. You have to make them. But how much easier would this be, Hobie, if you wanted to add a variety oh, or switch varieties? If you had an aquaponics system. We found the net pot. <laughs> here's the net pot. That oh. had, you know, Auburn, get in there 15 or 20 pot. oha for each plant. Oh. No, it had, it's back right. it had 10 or 12 oha two months ago. We just let this go to make the call a bit. Come over here. Where are you? Me place so then you can do grafting. Is that what you're talking about with different <laughs> different types? Not, of no, not grafting. It, I, to the best of my knowledge, this is not a plant you can graft. Now, technically, this but, is big enough to plant. It's got its own roots. Yeah, there you go. That is a keiki right there. That's, that's an new, oha. That's a new terra plant. That may be our smallest oha. And if you take care There's of no. that, it will be this in about four and a half months. Oh my All you have to do is take care of it. Now, taro is an amazing plant. We love taro. Yeah. Auburn, I'm going to go now to turn this side. around now so Auburn can see the, see the net pot in there. We're going to so get that. planted we that in the same medium? As, yes. Uh-huh. I'll lay them out in order. Biggest to smallest. We'll see how many we get. There's another big one. Get that jug. In the Hawaiian creation, there was I'm not good at remembering the name. I'm Waiakea, sorry, I'm bad on Waiakea name. the sky god. Waiakea, sky father, and Earth Mother was. Oh sky man, see, I don't, you just Earth smacked mother. me out there. Sorry, I'm a homie. Shane, do you know? <laughs> Earth Mother. Papa Wakea. Papa and Wakea. Papa and Wakea, that's the names. Papa? Papa and Wakea. Wakea, oh, Wakea was our mother? Yes. Okay, we're wrong. Our mother was Wakea. Papa was the father. They had, they had a first child who was born Trembling stock. No. Oh no, that's the, that's us. We're trembling stock. And that there you go. that child was Haloa, and they buried Haloa at the end of the house. And oh, cried, cried, cried. Cried, cried, and cried. Yes, it's a great tragedy to lose a child. Their second child was. Pardon, that was Haloa. You know, we should let somebody who knows the story better than we do. Good. They buried him. Sounds at the like end of the house. House. And this is what came up. Aloha Naka, long stalk, trembling leaf. Their second child was named Aloha. He was the first human. So the human's elder brother is Aloha Naka, is Taro. And in the Hawaiian tradition, we respect the elders. They're more important. They have the knowledge, the wisdom, and all the heritage. So this is our older brother here. Absolutely. This is what sustains us. This is what feeds us. Everything on this plant is edible. Look, look how this plant reproduces and makes more. Look at this. Now this is sustainable food production. No kidding. Yeah. See my head. It's farming itself. Ethnobotanist comes to my farm from Japan, studying how people take crops around the world and whatnot. 
and he's telling me that uh, they found tarot starch on stone tools in the Solomon Islands, 40,000 years old. He said, to the best of his knowledge, this is the oldest cultivated plant on the planet. Mm. They have it in Egypt. 25. 25. They have it in India. We have 25. 20. No. Yeah. 20. Hobie just made a really interesting point. I didn't know it was that old. An ethnobotanist from Japan, from Japan knew of stone tools found in the Solomon Islands uh, that had taro starch on them, and they dated that as 40,000 years ago. So, that long ago, 25. people were cultivating this plant. Yeah, Hobie, where are you? Yeah. Let Hobie talk about this. Remote, yeah, what, what's your reaction to what they... Hobie and Shane, you guys, you guys know more about this than anybody here, so... Oh, it's just incredible the time, the amount of time you can get that taro out of the system for production. Oh my god, 26. And then also for uh, for reproducing, it takes me a year to get maybe four to six keiki. So from one wow. acre in a year, I'll be able to plant four acres. Whereas this, it's like if I had an acre of this, I could plant in four months. 40 acres of it. So it would be three times. Months, so. It just grows exponential. Times and then five, right? Also on a research side, the only way to cross these and get resistant varieties and get, which the Hawaiians did, they cro actually crossed the taro plant when it flowered. But it only flowered maybe every two years. But now if you get flowering every couple of months, you can cross yeah. varieties, you can grow them out. Because they have to cross them, then they have to grow them out for a year to see what the taro is going to look like. Is the leaf viable? Is it resistant? It's a two-year process from when maybe it flowers. You're talking maybe four, five, six years before you get a viable crop that you can then start growing production-wise. And so even on a research standpoint, it's just it's incredible. One, one thing or... Uh, wait, hang on. Oh, sorry. Shane. Hobie, you're probably harvesting stuff like this after nine months and making poya. Yeah? Then yeah. 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 the stuff. Uh, the yeah. commercial yeah. farmers here have told us if it's the size of a coffee mug. Yeah. It's a good. Yeah. Is that? I thought yeah. it was your fix. This, no. this is a consistent production. That's an espresso and mug. And larger, <laughs> and larger. We've gotten collo that weighed a couple pounds more than that. And then what happens with us too? With in the ground, you can't control the fertilizer. You get fertilizer spikes. You get this and that. So you get an hourglass shape, which is almost, it's almost impossible to clean when you're cooking. You get snails eating around the sides. So they eat the hoolies. You end up with maybe one or two. Yeah, chickens, eat the chickens, pigs. Yeah. Yeah. So did you expect to see this? Did you know that this was? No. Uh, What's I your didn't reaction? Think the, the taro would grow that that well. Yeah. In four I'm months. Start four months. months. This, this is four months. months. Yeah. Okay. A couple yeah. more things here. I, I, I'm going to butt in and just blurt it out because we did. We've been doing taro experiments for about two years now, and. One of the early experiments that we wrapped up was planting densities. We started with the planting density that the, the local taro farmers recommended, which was, you know, from here to here, you know, like that, from there to there. In other words, one plant every, like, you know, four ounce length. Like 18, 24 inches. Now, there, yeah. were, there were farmers who said, that's too close. They're going to feel each other, and each one is going to grow small like that. But me, I'm stupid. I don't know what I can't do. <laughs> And that's really a, a, a benefit sometimes, because I'll try all kinds of crazy stuff that if I knew what I was doing, I would know it wouldn't work, and I wouldn't ever try it. So what we did is we drilled rafts yeah. with half that spacing, and then we drilled rafts with half that spacing. Okay, so we had taro plants planted in rafts that were this far apart in three-inch pots, and every single one of them turned into that. It was like you could have fallen on that raft and you would have ended up this high off the ground because there were so much plants there that now that's something that's supposed to be impossible not happen. And it brought the flowers out. And there's also something very unusual here. Incredible amount of keiki. They all had keiki like this. Right, but what you're not realizing and you're seeing is normally when you pull off a keiki, Hobie and Shane, it looks like this, yeah. Put it in the ground. It's going to make a plant. How often you seeing keiki with roots like that? This plant is ready to take off and already. It's got its, its, its delivery system for nutrients is already in place. 
and we don't know what that means in terms of growth time.